Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Say, David, you know it's freezing this morning. Now, please wear your muffler, please. I will not wear a muffler. Oh, you think it's cold now when it's hardly Thanksgiving? What do you do when it's winter? Now, well, worry about that then, David. You'll catch your death. I don't need a muffler, and that's that. All right. Be a great big strong man. Have it your way. I intend to. Hey, listen, you don't have to rush off to the station already. Mm. Carl will take a few minutes to warm up this morning. And if the car's cold, think what you'll be without your muffler. Oh. All right, all right. Now, don't look at me like that. I didn't say anything. This button's loose. Oh. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll sew it on tonight, darling. You sewed it on last night. That's why it's loose. Now, listen, Goop. Tell Roger to come out with you tomorrow night. Then he'll be here and ready for Thanksgiving Day. I'll bring him back with me. Good. I, I don't mind having him at all, do you? No, no, not at all. I thought we were going to be alone, oh, but... I know, but when he called last night, I just had to ask Man, him. No apologies. Besides, Roger's almost family. David, if it weren't for him, we probably wouldn't be living in this house. He mm. discovered it, remember? Yeah, I remember. Oh, I think it's going to be a lovely Thanksgiving. Just you and Mama and Bobby, Roger and me, that's still a cozy little family. But no one else. David. What? We're not being selfish wanting to be alone, are we? No, of course not. It's all right. It's even normal. Normal? You make it sound so dull. Who wants to be normal? (laughs) Say, that that looks like... Isn't that Gerard Tucker going up to the barn? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's the old man himself. Honestly, he certainly gets around. <laughs> I hope that when I'm 98... 86. I'll... Oh, all right, 86, 98. What's the difference? Twelve years. Well, I just hope I get around that well. Look at him. Surprise, the grasshopper. With a touch of rheumatism. David, open the window. Let's take a morning to him, right. shall we? Hello there, Mr. Tucker. Hello there, son. You still around? Yeah, come on down to the house. We'll give you a cup of coffee. Had my coffee. Been up and around and doing my chores for nigh on to two hours. Two right. hours? Well, then it's high time you had another cup of coffee. Come on in. Come on in. Latch is off the front door. If ever the figure of independence was caught all in one man, it's Jared Tucker. Yeah, but I don't think he needs or wants anything except his freedom. I don't suppose he's... All that crusty, but he's got a good, thick coat of it on. And a muffler, please notice. David, if Jared Tucker can wear a muffler... Now, listen. All right, I I didn't say anything, darling. Of course, he's only 86, so... Jared Tucker here. Come on in, Mr. Tucker. Warm yourself. Boy, the weather sure is trying to take a bite out of me today. (laughs) Yep, the wind blowing across the field at breakneck speed. It is, uh... Don't know where it's heading for, but sure is whipping along. (laughs) Tucker, you must be freezing. Uh, A little bit of weather never hurt me. Nope. Buck you up, that's what does buck you up. Oh, bucks me down. Oh, now I don't go along acting frail, Mrs. Norton. Just get out there and bite the wind back, I say. (laughs) Look at it in the face and say, blow, blow, blow. Shades of King Lear. Uh, What are you doing up and around so early, Mr. Tucker? Oh, heck, this ain't so early. Maybe you're wondering what I'm doing crossing your field at quarter to eight of a Tuesday morning. No, not at all. You have the right of way on this land any time you like, Mr. Tucker. Well, that's right neighborly thought. Yep. You know, I ain't a mite sorry I sold this house to you. You're well, coming you. along fine as neighbors. Yes, indeedy. Pretty soon they won't know you from a Yankee. Now, that's what I call a real compliment. I was ambling up to the barn to see your man Fritz, a grain man from the other side of Bridgeport, get me a good deal on feed yesterday. Oh. Thought you might like to get in onto it. Yes, you know a bargain when you see it, Mr. Tucker. Thanks. Well, I never let anybody spend a penny when they can hold on to it. <laughs> penny in my pocket's a lot better off than a penny in somebody else's. Yep, <laughs> that's the way it is. It's what I always tell Delilah. Oh, tell me, how is your sister? Well, she's up to her ears getting ready for Thanksgiving. Oh, my sister's up to her ears in packing her belongings. That's what she is. Oh. What? Yeah, she's stowing her gear. Aim to take herself a little trip. Is that right? Do you mean she's not going to be home for Thanksgiving? Nope, my aunt Cher up near Waterbury Way. She holds one of them there big Thanksgiving clam bakes every year. Mm-hmm. We young ones all supposed to turn up, but it, it, it's kind of dull business. So Delilah and me, we take turns. Mm-hmm. I go up one year, Delilah, she goes up another. Only I ain't been in the last eight. Well, that's not a very <laughs> fair bargain for a fair man, is it? Well, it's like this. 
Delilah, she's the youngest one in the whole lot. So for the privilege, she goes to Waterbury. Oh, I see. Sides, sides, women like sitting around looking at other people and their families and saying that they're a lot handsomer and better off than their cousins and nieces and aunts and <laughs> uncles and nephews. So I get all spiffied up. <laughs> You'd think she was going off to the fair to buy a cow or something. So I, I just let her go. Mr. Tucker, don't you, don't you kind of mind being alone on Thanksgiving? Oh, I don't hold for no celebrations. Fetishes ain't for me. Oh. I feel like eating turkey. I go out to my yard and kill a turkey and I eat it. Oh, dear. I don't need to set apart no day in the year for that. That's Molly Cotton. That's what it is. Funny, I thought you'd sort of like Thanksgiving. It's a New England tradition, and you're something of a New England tradition yourself, Mr. Tucker. Well, that's the way it is with me. I take my pleasures alone, by myself. I'll spend Thanksgiving just like any other day. Yep, feed my pigs, feed my cows, feed myself. I'll leave all that setting around the table, stuffing yourself with indigestibles to Delilah and you others. I don't mind being alone. No, no, not a bit. Well, as long as you don't mind. David and I were just saying how wonderful it's going to be up here with our whole family. You know, it's our first Thanksgiving on the farm. Sentiment? That's all it is, sentiment in Bosch. <laughs> Claudia, he thinks he does protest too much. He thinks he does too, mm. Speak up, speak up, will you? I don't like folks talking in front of my back in oh, a whisper. Oh, we weren't a... Just because I finally got my own teeth, finally they wore out, don't mean that I'm, I'm deaf. Don't it? My ears ain't wore out, no. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, how are your teeth? Well, I'm learning to handle them better. They don't pop out on me the way they used to. Good. Hardly nothing I can't eat now there ain't. I'm, I'm the boss. Oh, well, that's fine. Yep. I could do pretty good on a second joint of turkey. <laughs> Of course, mashed sweet potatoes with marshmallows on top. Go down easy in nuts and apples and all the trimmings. My teeth could handle them fine. Good. But um, you said that you weren't going to have any Thanksgiving dinner. Well, that's what I said. Of course, I've been thinking it ain't fair to my teeth when they're just learning to behave themselves, not to give them a chance. Kind of nice for them to set it chewing on holiday. <laughs> Dang, shiny clippers get out of hand once in a while, you know. <laughs> David. All right, go ahead, darling. All right. Say, Mr. Tucker, now, why don't you set your teeth at chewing at our table Thanksgiving Day? You mean, uh, you're extending me an invitation? Yep, that's exactly what we're extending. Well, wouldn't be neighborly of me not to accept, No, would it? it wouldn't. No, We'd no, be it very wouldn't. angry, very hurt, too. Well, wouldn't be neighborly of me to do that to you neither, would it? No, no sir, it would not. Well... <clears throat> Since I aim to be a fine neighbor to you folks, I'll do you the favor. I'll come over and break bed with you on Thanksgiving. Well, we we certainly would appreciate that, Mr. Tucker. Now, mind you, it ain't that I can't enjoy eating turkey alone. Oh, no, of course not. It ain't that I'd be hurt if you didn't ask me. It ain't that I'd come over here this morning so should ask me. Well, of course not, Mr. Tucker. It's just that, it, well, it wouldn't be the same without you. Darn tootin' it wouldn't be the same without me. So I'll come. Yep, I'll be here. Good. Fine, fine. One o'clock. Yep, one o'clock. Now I'll amble up to your barn and take care of that feed business with your man, Fritz. Thanks. Even things out between us. Uh, you don't have to see me to the door. I can find my way out just like I found my way in. All right, see you on Thursday, Mr. Tucker. I'll do my best to remember. If I do, I'll see you on Thursday. All right. right. Well, that settles it. <laughs> Even independent Jared Tucker would be lonesome all alone on Thanksgiving. Which proves that a thick crust isn't as thick as it sounds. <laughs> He's a funny old codger, isn't he? Well, I don't blame him. What's the use of being independent if you have to be independent alone? Oh, I'm glad we asked him. Or that he asked himself. Oh, what's one more at the table anyway? One more. Well, I don't mind. Much. You bet you don't. Neither do I. Much. But this one more is all. Are you speaking to me? Yes, I am. Well, save your strength. You're the one that's been doing all the inviting around here. Oh, wonder who that could be. I'll get it. Hello. Hello there, David. Oh, Hartley, is it you? Brother, how nice. How you been, David? Sunny hour for him, isn't it? Oh, shipshape Hartley, and you? Pretty well for me, yes, pretty well. Hey, David. Uh, hold line a minute, Hartley. Claudia's trying to say something as usual. Give her my regards. Yeah, I will. Just a minute. David, listen, I bet you 20 cents Hartley's going to be invited to Thanksgiving. I bet you. That's probably right. What'll we do? Mm, I'll, um, I'll take care of it. David, he's, he's, a, he's a blood relative. That's more than Jared and Roger are, so we really... So let's not jump to conclusions. Well, let's talk to Hartley and see what he's well, got in mind. still, I bet you that's why he's called. Hello, Hartley. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. 
I'll tell you why I called so early. Hmm? I wanted to catch you at home where you could consult with Claudia. Yeah, uh, just a minute, Hartley. He's coming to the point. Oh, poor Hartley. You want me to say no, don't you? Well, uh, I... Go on, Hartley. Well, you know, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Yes, we know Thursday's Thanksgiving. I win 20 cents. It's a good day for families to be together, David. Yes, it is. Though usually I'm not much of a family man. You're not going up to Boston with Julia? No, no. At the last minute, Julia decided not to go up either. Oh? It's an awful lot of trip for her. and She's been feeling tired. And so I thought perhaps uh, Julia and I could... This uh... is it, darling. This is it. Well, simply... Uh, would you and Claudia come down to New York and spend the day with us? You, uh, you mean you're inviting Claudia and me? You sound surprised. He's inviting us? Well, how about it? Well, um, well, hardly it's... We took it yes. you were, weren't having any celebration. Oh, oh well, we're, we're not, but, uh, um... Well, then, then let's be together. You come on down to New York. Huh? Oh, we we wouldn't dream of it, Hartley. Now, look here, Dave. Now, you see, we can't very well. There's Claudia's mother and the baby, and besides, we expect you and Julia up here. Oh, but Dave... No I... buts about it now. Huh? Now that you're not going to Boston, you come here. Yes, but, but I didn't call so oh, Of course you... you didn't, of huh? course you didn't. We'll, uh, we'll see you Thursday, Hartley. Well, all right, you will see us Thursday. Right. With bells on. <laughs> It'll be good being together. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, Hartley. Well, <clears throat> they're coming. Of course they're coming, darling. I'd be very disappointed if they weren't. Who wants to be alone on Thanksgiving? We do. You mean we did? <laughs> well, we're certainly great ones for keeping our words to ourselves, aren't we? Well, now we're even anyway. I invited Jared and Roger, and you invited Hartley and Julia. <laughs> It'll be a lovely day. David, you're, you're, you're not sorry, are you? No, just thinking. The best laid plans of mice and men. If you're having a young people's party during the Thanksgiving weekend, remember to put plenty of Coke on ice. For ice-cold Coca-Cola is as much a part of the social life of youth as music, dancing, or games. Bring home a case of Coke next time you're at the grocer's or service station. Well, I've seen Fritz about the feed, and it's all set, this. Uh, David and Claudia certainly appreciate your advice, Mr. Tucker. Well, they should, though I'm glad to give it to them. They're, uh, they're right good neighbors. I don't even mind coming over Thanksgiving dinner. Ought to be a good one. Yep, I, I hear say that that there uh, Bertha the Norton's got is a socked Gallagher of a cook. Well, Bertha's not going to have her finger in this soup. She and Fritz uh, won't even be around to help out on that day. Well, he, uh, he, he didn't say nothing about going away. He doesn't know yet, and uh, neither does David. But, uh, Mr. Tucker, they'll both find out tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Norton, he won't mind. Well, that's what we'll find out. Well, I'll be around. Nice to have seen you, Mr. Tucker. Drop in again. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.